In today's episode, we put futuristic photography in the Imagination Forge. Photography. Every year, cameras gain more pixels, better color, and all sorts of features and attachments. So will the future of photography be more bells and whistles to enhance bigger 2D images? Or is there something very different in store for the future? Something different is definitely coming. Cameras are effectively just sensors. And sensors are basically little devices that collect data. So cameras collect data about light in the environment to create images. If you add sense more sensors together as one package, like this 3D MD scanner here behind me, you can see there's several different sensors. You can collect images like this of my face that have more data to them other than the image. As you can see, it is three-dimensional. So even in the year 2014, 3D scanning technology is quite advanced. Probably one of the most exciting 3D scanners you could get your hands on is a LiDAR scanner. The problem is they're really expensive. Basically, it's a device that you set on top of a tripod and you can set it up out in a field and it literally can scan acres of area, okay? The device itself actually shoots lasers off, probably hundreds of lasers per second, and it has sensors built in that measure where these lasers intersect somewhere, like hitting a tree or hitting some grass, the ground. So they can measure quite a, ra quite a ways. The computing system bu built into the device literally logs, well, computes and logs exactly where this point was. So X y and z represents the position so three numbers and then it also will calculate the color in three channels red green and blue so you have six measurements per point and probably hundreds of thousands of points that get collected from a lidar scanner so once you've done a 3d scan there's like about eight to ten different softwares out there that you can just download and use some of them cost a little bit some of them are free the most popular is mesh lab and what we're viewing here in Mesh Lab is a 3D scan that I did of our family's vacation home, just a corner of it. So here we have a refrigerator, some cabinets and things like that, the floor, pictures on the wall. It doesn't look like much from this view, but this is the value of a 3D scan for a photo is I now can click and interact with it and see around the dimensionality of the scene. So we can view it as if we were a mouse view it as if we were a uh, tall person. There's various holes in the image, that's where the scanner couldn't see basically. But the difference here between this and a regular photo is, is pretty obvious, but if you really get down to what's actually happening here is we have, an, instead of one single view of something in two dimensions, since we have 3D data, we can have infinite amount of views. You can also spin it around and see the negative of the image, basically the inverse of the geometry. And uh, this is a good way to share dimensional information, but it's also a good way to record life. So the biggest problem with relying on LiDAR or that 3D MD type face scanner that I showed you is the cost involved for projects. Uh, the 3D MD face scanner, it's, it's around $20,000. LiDAR scanners, they're $40,000 and up. So that's pretty prohibitive for anybody that just wants to dabble and experiment in this stuff. That scan I just showed you on the touch screen, it's actually a, a scan that I did with a Kinect. And an Xbox Kinect is, you know, less than $200. Sometimes you can get them on eBay for like 50 bucks. And it's basically just a point cloud scanner that works pretty well for just rudimentary scans. You're not going to get engineering quality data. In fact, if you scan a flat wall with a Kinect, it won't be flat if you really look at the data. But you'll generally get the shape that you're scanning. So it's good for photography. Once you have your Kinect data, the best way to view it, in my opinion, other than just looking at it on a computer monitor, is with some sort of immersive display. So a 3D TV works really well. So then if you can do that, then the yeah, next obvious thing would be an Oculus Rift. So by using an Oculus, you basically are looking at a 3D scan, scanned world. You know, it's an immersive world at that point. And uh, you can basically put yourself in the middle of the scan and look around you as if you were actually there. So that's one of the coolest things I think about 3D scanning is that immersion capability.
All right, so I'm going to assemble here for you in front of me my rig that I generally use when I go to scan, like, say, a large room or an area. Uh, I use a software called Skinect, and all the directions on how to install Skinect and the drivers for your Xbox uh, Connect are in the, the link below in the description. If you, want to, if you want to figure out how to do all this, uh, just follow along here with me, and then those directions will also show you how to install all the software. All right, so... If I'm going to go to a room and scan a room, I'm going to need some sort of mobile platform for the Kinect itself so that I know that it's pretty much at the same height every time. This doesn't have to be exact because the Kinect itself isn't really exact. So I have a multi-cart here. This is just kind of a shipping cart. I like these because they can literally like expand out to be bigger if I need to carry more stuff or they can shrink and fit in my car. Um, the platform here has got full of holes, so you usually want to put a piece of wood or something on it. Here's just a big thing of cardboard that'll work for me for today. We're just going to be scanning this corner of my office, which there's like a bookshelf here with a bunch of action figures. I know you can't see that in the video, but you'll see it in the 3D scan when it comes out. But obviously you need your Xbox Connect, so I've got mine here already mounted on a tripod, and you just set that on here once you're ready to set up. The Connect itself, I just tape onto this tripod. It's a uh, it's nice because the tripod head will pitch up and down and then of course I can rotate or yaw the whole thing here and uh, you can lock it into place with these little friction knobs. Uh, the software I'm using, I usually, if I'm on site, I'll run it on a, uh, on a netbook. It's not a very heavy duty software as long as you get a decent graphics card. This netbook was like $100 so it's nice to be able to take this in the field. It's small. It's running Windows XP. And then I connect my connect up to that, run the Skinect software, and uh, I can do my scans here with that. Okay, let's get into the software. Okay, so in the software, we can see here on the left side, we've got this live view of what the Kinect cam camera sees itself. And then we have the sensor results here too in red. These black areas, they represent areas that might be reflective. The Kinect maybe just can't see them because of an angle or something's blocking it. But uh, that's why we take multiple scans that, so that we can align them together. So you see this bookshelf here. I'm going to try to get that in about the center of the screen. And I'll tilt my Kinect down so that we see the floor. Okay. That will be our first scan. And then we're going to tilt up to get the middle and then the top. So to scan, it's pretty simple. You just hit start. And what it does is it captures what it sees. And it just keep, continues to add in more detail. The longer you let this sit, the more detail it's going to fit, more detail is going to fill in, and also your file size is going to be a heck of a lot bigger if you let this go too long. So we'll hit pause, and now we'll adjust the connect to see the center. So I'm just literally going to loosen the tripod mount, tilt it up. Now we got to make sure in the software that we can see part of the last scan. It's got to overlap. So we see here I've got this Star Wars snow speeder action figure thing here. And it's also now in this view. So it, the software should be smart enough to see that that is overlapped and fill in above here. So we'll hit start again. There, it was smart enough to link them up. I'll let some of this detail fill in. Okay, that looks good. We'll hit pause. And we'll tilt it up for the third and final view. Again, it's got to be overlapping. So we see these books books here are in this image and they're in this one so it should be smart enough to get that. I'm going to go ahead and tilt the image down, zoom out a little bit. Now we'll hit the start for the scan. There, I went ahead and filled it in. So I'll pause that and there we have our 3D scan and uh, we can look at it from a mini angle and you can see there's a lot of missing areas like here and here but we can move the camera and continue scanning maybe lift this tripod up in the air and scan from a from a little bit different height but that is basically the gist of how you do this so I would take this and save this now as one scan so that we have it and it saves it as a PLY file so I'll go ahead and save that to my desktop and uh, there you have it there's a full 3d scan now that you have in a file that you can open up in mesh lab and modify my favorite thing about 3d scanning is the capability it promises for capturing situations and things that you could relive later or be immersed in later, right? So my grandpa passed away in 2010 
and he was a uh, person I really admired for his do-it-yourself attitude. In fact, he built many things in his life that he just couldn't go out and buy because he didn't have the money to. So, for instance, one of his many projects was a custom-made motorhome that he built literally from the ground up. He took this thing to Alaska several times during his retirement, and it now sits at our vacation home, kind of as a place for people to sleep in, you know, when there's not enough room in the actual cabin. But uh, it's in disre disrepair, but we keep it around in the family. But I wanted to preserve it with a 3D scan. So I took it an Xbox Connect out after, right around sundown, so that the sun wasn't so intense would, that would uh, cause an interference with the Connect scanner. And I basically scanned this motorhome several times. You can see these are kind of like the fronts of the scan as they went in. It's like a shaped like a, a frustum. So the, the, the difference here between this and what I've just shown you with the Connect workflow is that this actually is several scans put together. So it's not just one big scan of this big motorhome, but it's actually several scans all, all stitched together or, or aligned together. You can do this in MeshLab. And there's a tutorial here, click on this annotation. If you'd like to take several scans and align them together as one scan and then re-export it as one scan. So this was 22 scans. So we can look at the back. I've even got some plant matter down here that was scanned in the, in the scan. There's a tarp on top, that's what that is, that blue thing. And uh, this is great, you know, I can, the, I think the, the most exciting thing for me was that I found a JavaScript viewer that I was able to put this online with and put it out there. And now my family can go to this website, just go to a web link, and actually see this and click and tumble it without very much technical understanding. It's just like going to any other web page. Hey, everybody. We're down here in Indianapolis today at my son's lab and we're working on a little project for my next engine and it's pretty neat. I'll let my son tell you all about it. Chauncey? Yeah, so dad, uh, he spent a lot of time really getting the specs right on this engine so we're going to add a little personal touch to it. Instead of him like signing his name to it, we're actually going to uh, scan his face today in 3D and then I'm going to print it out in 3D in stainless steel so that it can be mounted on the, uh, the belt cover on the back of the engine so that when you open up the engine compartment, you see the engine and, and you basically see the engine builder's face 3D printed in metal on the, on the back of the engine. So we're going to go ahead and do a scan. So I have Dad here lined up in front of the scanner and I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn it on. So that's all it takes right there, just a second. That's a scan. and. Uh, We'll show you the 3D scan here. Okay, guys, so as you can see here, we got a funny face scan of my dad. That's a dang nice looking and, uh, We'll there. probably do a few more to get a, get his cigar in his mouth and all that and really get a good iconic photo. But the sensors and the camera has really picked up a lot of good data. As you can see, there's a three-dimensional representation now of his face. And I can switch to a wireframe view right here. Or actually, this is just an ISO surface view. We've got some holes here that I can fix in post-processing. I might have to smooth his mustache out a little bit, but uh, you get the idea. This is an artifact of the scanning. It's not actually in his skin. It won't really affect it too much. It just looks a little odd. Uh, we'll look at the wireframe mesh now. You can see everything's in triangles. So that's a pretty decent scan. We'll do a few more today, but uh, you can see where we're going with this. So it's been a couple months here. You kind of see it's snowing outside now. Uh, but we've processed the data from the 3D scan I made of my dad's head here. And uh, we're getting ready to apply it to the car. Um, the test print came out pretty well. So this is a 3D print from shapeways.com. You can see we've got my th dad's 3D head scan right there. Uh, I took his, his own handwriting and his signature there and converted it to uh, kind of be imposed in there like an engraving. And it's hollow on the back just to kind of minimize the amount of extra cost from the structural material. But uh, this is metallic plastic from Shapeways. The, the workflow I used was after the initial head scan, I took everything into Geomagic Design X to fill in holes very quickly, and then also do the three millimeter extrusion on the back to give it thickness for his head scan. And then in Maya, I modeled out this special plate and the right holes and size, and then also um, did a bullion here to get his uh, signature engraved into the, the, the piece. Now, when I initially submitted this to Shapeways, 
they were complaining about the, the brim of his hat was too too thin and the cigar in his mouth was way too thin. It was going to be too brittle when we printed it out. So I got in the mud box, puffed those up a little bit using the sculpting tools and mud box, and then uh, sent it in and they printed it out just fine. We're, this is, uh, like I said, metallic plastic and it's going to be going to uh, probably a bronze metal here next. Okay, so in the meantime, as I was working on this print, Dad was working on the, the actual mounting plate, which is kind of a fan belt cover. Yes. What this is, it's a decoration piece for a custom Volkswagen. Uh, you can see that I put an inline groove around it, and this will fit on the back of the engine. Um, I will inlay this with blue, the color of my car, and this is what the finished product is going to look like. And the two holes that are in the 3D printed object are actually tied into where the mounting holes will be at. And then this will help trim out the Volkswagen engine uh, for, for that wow factor when someone looks at the hood, looks underneath the hood. So this car here, um, obviously it's winter time now, it's kind of in dormant, it's been put away for the, the winter. But uh, here's a clip of it in the summertime. It looks real nice outside and shines up pretty well. To add this custom touch to it is just you know icing on the cake. And um, by using 3D printing or 3D scanning with um, you know this style of 3D printing, you know you, you can take some progressive workflows like I was explaining in in GeoMagic and Mudbox, and you can take a portrait and turn it into something that actually is an object that you can have for nostalgia. And uh, you know with traditional photography, you know, you take a photo and you can print it out as a something you hang up on the wall. With something like this, you can have functional objects, decorative objects that just mean a whole heck of a lot that are in 3D shapes. And, you know, for the time being, it's still a pretty impressive thing to do. You know, as time goes on, this, this might be a really common thing to do. But uh, I hope you're seeing here the connection between 3D scanning and photography kind of being married together as a new form of photography. So, thanks, Dad. It, well, Chauncey, collaborating. I think this is pretty cool. I didn't really quite get what you wanted me to do when you scanned my face. But the only problem that I have with this is, is you've got me with a Corona cigar, not the Grenadier. <laughs> so, thank you. No I really hope that from watching this video, the world of 3D scanning has opened up a little bit more in those mental doors of your imagination and you're starting to think of some ideas. Uh, Probably the most exciting thing for the future, in my opinion, the near future, is I think 3D video cameras that do 3D scanning, uh, I think that's going to be awesome if we can get those. Because basically we'll be able to shoot things that represent our past, and they'll be very realistic, as you can see here behind me. Thanks for joining me. I have lots more ahead. Stay tuned for next week. The Imagination Forge is just getting warmed up. Click that subscribe button to be sure you don't miss what's coming next week.